Thank you. Um, the, the main words uh, that I want to uh, tell today is uh, that I believe that Azad Miftahov must be released, the war must be stopped, and uh, Slava Ukraini. Okay, and now uh, proceeding to my talk, I will uh, today talk about our joint work with uh, Evgeny Fagin and uh, Mikhail Finkelberg. Uh, let me start. First, I will, I will uh, recall the finite dimensional um, geometric picture that arises in um, the context I'll uh, talk about. And I'll let G be a simple complex Lie algebra. Uh, the most classical example is SLN. Uh, let uh, G be uh, any of uh, corresponding Lie Li groups to uh, this Lie algebra, let B be uh, some of its plural subgroups, and H be uh, a, a maximal torus weight. For example, in case of SLN, we, uh, B, plural group is uh, upper uh, the group of upper triangle matrices, and uh, H is just the group of diagonal matrices. And uh, the main geometric object uh, we are dealing with is uh, G quotient by B, which is called flag variety. And in case of SLN, that is just a manifold of complete flags in n dimensional complex space. Okay, now uh, let us be, pick any uh, character of uh, the torus H, and then we can construct uh, the one dimensional uh, B module uh, using this character just. Uh, by taking quotient of uh, B by its unipotent radical, getting H, and then composing it with lambda. Um, unipotent uh, radical in case of uh, SLN is nothing else but um, unitriangle matrices with identities on diagonal and um, zeros below the diagonal. Uh, and uh, using this one dimensional B module, we can get uh, a line bundle on the flag variety, just taking uh, the product over B uh, of G and uh, C minus lambda. That was what we denote by L lambda. Okay, that is an uh, equivariant, uh, G, G equivariant uh, bundle on the flag variety. And uh, the classical borel weyl theorem states that for uh, lambda being a dominant weight, uh, there is an isomorphism of G module. The space of global sections of this uh, bundle L lambda on the flag variety is nothing else but uh, the dualized um, irreducible uh, representation of highest weight lambda. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what we have uh, for uh, our group G is uh, also Bruja decomposition. That is, if we consider left and right B actions on G, uh, these double orbits uh, are actually parameterized by uh, the elements of a wild group. That is a finite group. In case of um, SLN, that is just a symmetric group. And of course, uh, this implies that if we uh, consider the left p action on uh, the flag variety, then its orbit are parameterized again by the elements of uh, the wild group. And uh, that is what is called Schubert cells. And uh, we call uh, it the closure of a Schubert cell, the Schubert variety. And uh, the natural question to ask is, what if we restrict uh, the space of sections from the whole flag variety to uh, some Schubert cell. And uh, this question has a nice answer uh, given by Demazur. Uh, and those modules are called Demazur modules. Let me define them. They are defined by uh, an element W of the wild group and a, a dominant weight. Uh, take uh, the lambda, the again, the irreducible G module of highest weight lambda. And since uh, its uh, set of its weight um, is invariant under the action of um, 
the wild group, there is a unique up to scalar uh, vector of weight uh, W applied to lambda, uh, since there is a unique uh, highest weight vector up to scalar, of course. Uh, take this vector and um, just generate B module from uh, this vector, meaning that uh, apply the universal enveloping of the Borel algebra to this vector. We get some B module living inside the lambda. Let me give two examples. First, if uh, our element of uh, the while group is trivial, just identity, then uh, our vector B uh, W lambda is just uh, the highest vector, the, the highest weight vector, and um, the Borel subalgebra acts on it by scalars, probably by zero scalars. So we uh, get uh, nothing interesting. We uh, get uh, just one dimensional. Uh, trivial model. On the contrary, if we uh, take uh, the element of the wild group to be the maximal element of the wild group, W0, then uh, the vector V uh, W lambda will be the, the lowest weight vector. And uh, applying Borel subalgebra to it, we get the whole V lambda. So uh, we get the whole module, uh, of course, uh, as a B module. And if uh, an element of the wild group lies in between of uh, these two um, extreme cases, then the Demasur module will be uh, some something in between these two cases. Uh, so that is a reasonable thing. And the answer to uh, the question I uh, wrote here is that uh, the space of uh, sections of this line bundle L lambda on the Schubert variety corresponding to uh, an element of the while group W is just dualized Demasur module. Note that in these two uh, particular cases, this theorem makes perfect sense since uh, the Schubert cell corresponding to the identity element of the wild group is just a point, and the space of sections is just one dimensional. And uh, if uh, the element of the wild group is uh, maximal, then the corresponding Schubert cell is uh, open dense cell, so we get the whole uh, module again. Okay. Uh, that is all I wanted to recall about the finite dimensional case. Now let us proceed to uh, the generalization of this um, theorems to the affine case. Uh, let me now assume that um, the group G is uh, the joint group of uh, the Lie algebra G. I'll explain in a minute why we uh, decide to pick uh, this one. The it means that it has uh, no center, uh, this Lie group G. And uh, it also means that it has uh, the, the largest uh, fundamental group of all possible uh, Lie groups corresponding to the Lie algebra G. So uh, P1 of G is uh, the quotient of uh, P check over Q check, where uh, P check is a core root. Or core root lattice. Oh, oh, so, so, sorry, uh, P check is a co weight lattice. And Q check is uh, the core root, core root lattice. Okay, and uh, our main. Uh, the, the Lie algebra we are dealing with is the affine Katsmuri Lie algebra. It is a central extension of uh, the loop algebra. And the main geometric object we are working with is the affine Grassmannian. It is defined as G of K uh, quotient by G of R, 
where k is uh, the ring of uh, Laurent series and O is the ring of Taylor series. Uh, that is um, um, not a scheme anymore, but it is uh, an int scheme. So we can work with it uh, geometrically and uh, we, we will. And uh, actually we have that uh, the set of connected component of the affine Grossmannian is uh, the fundamental group of G. Uh, and uh, that's why actually we took uh, G to be the adjoint group uh, just for affine Grossmannian to have uh, as uh, much information as possible. If we would took some other group, we'll get like the same geometric object, but having uh, less connected components of, of this one. And uh, the natural thing to do is to parameterize uh, the connected components of the affine Grossmannian by the uh, all level one uh, integrable affine weights. Uh, the le uh, let me recall that the level is uh, the constant by which this central charge K acts. So uh, that is uh, uh, all, again, all level one integrable affine weights. And uh, that there is uh, a very ample determinant line bundle lambda on the affine Grossmannian. And um, there is a, a straight analog of the Borel whale theorem. First, uh, let us cl claim that the space of sections of the determinant line bundle on the affine Grossmannian is uh, the direct sum of all dualized uh, L, L of uh, lambda i's, where those are uh, all. Uh, the irreducible integrable uh, representations of the affine Katsumori uh, Lie algebra of level one. Uh, okay, here dualized mean like continuous duals. Uh, and uh, let us also claim that uh, more generally for arbitrary uh, integer non-negative L, the space of sections of the power of the determinant line bundle on the affine Grossmannian is uh, the, the direct sum of all uh, irreducible modules of um, G hat of uh, highest weights L lambda i's. So we just take multiples of the level one uh, affine weight. Okay. Uh, and uh, we can ask about the Schubert cells in this affine situation, and they are indeed defined. Namely, uh, we of course can again consider the left action of G of or O of on uh, the affine Grossmannian, and it turns out that um, the orbits are uh, parameterized by the dominant co weights. Uh, let me explain what T lambda check means here. Uh, lambda, lambda check is a, a co weight, so it can be considered as a co character co of uh, the, the torus. But, but um, this map gives rise to, uh, it can be considered as an element of H of T. T inverse, right? And of course, this H T T inverse uh, naturally is naturally mapped to G. Oops, sorry, G of T T minus one quotient by G of T, which is our finders median. Uh, so. Uh, any uh, co weight, in particular, dominant co weight, has a representative point in the affine Grossmannian. And it turns out that the orbits of these points uh, are all the orbits of uh, the left action of GeoFo. Uh, so we call these uh, orbits Schubert cells. 
they are denoted like this. And again, the natural question is, what if we uh, consider the space of sections of the power of the determinant line bundle on um, a Schubert cell, a Schubert variety, the closure of the Schubert cell? And the answer uh, is given again by uh, the Mazur modules, uh, but here those will be affine Demazur modules. And to give uh, the definition of the affine Demazur module, let me illustrate it first in the case of SL2. In case of SL2, there are just two uh, level one uh, irreducible representations. Uh, L of lambda zero and uh, L of lambda one. And uh, schematically, they can be drawn as uh, two parabolas with uh, um, extra in integer points corresponding to, uh, on, on these parabolas, being uh, the set of extremal vectors in these representations, meaning that uh, there are maximal with respect to this T, gra T grading, uh, maximal vectors of their their weight. And uh, suppose we uh, take a, co a dominant co-weight uh, for SL2, which is, which is just a uh, positive integer. And uh, if, if this uh, co-weight is even, for example, four, then we pick this extremal vector of weight four in this uh, level one, integrable uh, module and we gen we generate g of t module from this vector so this this will be a module lying somewhere here on this picture yeah because uh, uh, we don't apply negative powers of t we just apply it positive so we we get something like here schematically and and if we want to pick a, an odd um, co-weight for example nine then we uh, oops, uh, then we uh, get module living here okay uh, um, let me make a remark that uh, generally I find the Mazur modules uh, need not to be uh, G of T modules. Uh, they're defined as uh, the modules over affine Borel uh, subalgebra, which is also called uh, Eva Hori subalgebra. And it is uh, it differs from G of T by a finite dimensional piece. But since we're dealing with affine Grossmannian, but not the affine flag variety, uh, we need only G-stable uh, Demazur modules, so they, in fact, will be uh, G of T modules. Um, and uh, for simplicity, we define uh, only these, uh, so, so to say, spherical uh, Demazur modules uh, corresponding to spherical uh, Schubert varieties. Uh, okay, and th that was a uh, SL2 case, but for arbitrary G, uh, again, uh, and I, I was talking about level one Demazur modules, since we were dealing with this level one representations. For arbitrary G to define a, a level one uh, find Demazur module, we uh, pick a dominant co-weight, and um, there is exactly one extremal vector in one, exactly one of uh, level one integrable modules of the weight y of lambda check, where y is uh, the natural embedding of co-weight lattice to the weight lattice. You can think that G is simply laced and make no difference between uh, weights and co-weights that uh, will not affect uh, the understanding of uh, the talk. Uh, yeah, and uh, again, we pick this external vector and generate a G of T module from it. And if we want to define a level L, so, so the Mazur modules we're dealing with are parameterized by an integer L, which is level and the co weight lambda check. So if we, to define it, we consider all the modules of uh, weight L lambda i's. Uh, which are multiples of level one integrable modules. We pick there in one of them 
uh, an external vector of this weight and generate a G of T module uh, from it. That is a straight analog of uh, demo zero modules in finite dimensional cage, which I um, described before. And uh, these are called uh, affine demo zero modules. And the theorem, which is again a very natural generalization of the finite dimensional theorem, which was described uh, on the previous slides, is that the space of sections on the Schubert variety corresponding to uh, the dominant co-weight lambda check of the Lth power of the determinant line bundle of the Gersmanian is the dualized uh, de Masur module uh, of level L and uh, corresponding to the co-weight lambda check. Uh, let me again stress out that these uh, de Masur modules are finite dimensional, though they are living in uh, infinite dimensional reducible representations. Okay, uh, that is uh, all that I wanted to say about the affine case. And uh, now we are proceeding to another geometric object, which is called um, the Bailey and Sondringfield Grossmanian. And to do so, first we need uh, the modular uh, realization of this standard affine Grossmanian. Uh, and uh, let us give this definition. The, the modular definition of the affine Grossmanian is that the affine Grossmanian is the modular space of pairs of uh, a G torsor on A1 and a, a trivialization of this torsor outside of a fixed point zero. In fact, we can take any curve, but we'll deal with A1. Okay, so. Uh, the equivalence of uh, this modular definition and uh, the standard uh, definition as a quotient is uh, something not hard, to, uh, which is not hard to, to show. Uh, just, uh, yeah, uh, you just need to define the torsor on uh, some chart and the uh, quotient corresponds to uh, choosing of trivialization. Okay, uh, and this, uh, gives us the possibility to define and to and the, the, gives a motivation to define the Bailey on Dreamfield Grossmanian. It uh, will depend not only on G, but only on the air positive number K. Uh, so the Bailey on Dreamfield Grossmanian is uh, the modular space of collections of uh, K points at A1, a G torsor of over A1, and it, a trivialization of this torsor outside of chosen points, C1 to CK. Okay, let me uh, illustrate this definition for some particular cases. Uh, let us start with uh, K equals one. Then uh, we have the map uh, of our uh, Balance on Dreamfield Grossmanian to A1, which just forgets uh, all the data except for uh, the point. So uh, in this case, the Balance on Dreamfield Grossmanian is a modular space of uh, a single point on A1, a G torsor, and the trivialization away from this chosen point. So this map uh, just maps, let me write it C1, row beta. Is mapped just to C1. Okay, and what is a fiber of any point of this map pi? Uh, that will be a modular space of torsors, uh, torsor row and a trivialization away from the point C1, if we consider fiber of the point C1. But that is uh, just the usual affine Grossmanian due to this definition. So this balance on Greenfield Grossmanian is uh, some vibration over A1 with fibers isomorphic to the affine Grossmanian. And actually using the global coordinate on A1, it can be trivialized. So we get nothing interesting in this case. We get that the balance on Greenfield Grossmanian is just a direct product of the affine Grossmanian times A1. However, something interesting uh, shows up in case 
k equals two. Uh, namely, we again uh, have uh, this uh, map that forgets everything except for uh, two points. And let's just consider uh, the fibers of this map in this case. Uh, it, here it is not true anymore that uh, the fibers does not depend on uh, the point uh, of A2, namely, uh, suppose we pick a point uh, first on the diagonal where uh, two coordinates coincide. Then we again uh, get uh, the fiber of this point is the modular space of G tor source and a trivialization away from this one point C. That is again the finest menu. However, take a point with a distinct coordinates, C1 and C2, uh, where C1 is not equal to C2. And then we get uh, the fiber uh, over this point is uh, a modular space of GTOR source and a, a trivialization away from these two points. And actually, one can show that uh, all the all interesting what is happening with the store source and trivializations is happening locally in uh, formal neighborhoods of these two points, C1 and C2. So, and in fact, this data is uh, of the fiber is the same as uh, the model space of two distinct store source and two th their trivializations away from C1 of the first one and away from C2 of the second one. So we hear what we get is the direct product of two of finest manians. So uh, that is uh, this balance on Greenfield grass manian over A2 is very interesting uh, geometric object whose fiber over the diagonal is just the fine grass manian. And away from diagonal is uh, the product of two of Ingers manians. The standard joke here is that we obtain a, a contradiction in mathematics since uh, the fiber at um, generic point has a lower dim dimension than, uh, so sorry, the fiber at special point have uh, greater, has lower dimension than a fiber at generic point. But uh, of course, there is no contradiction because uh, both these in schemes are infinite dimensional. So oh, we cannot talk about dimensions, but uh, that is uh, something counterintuitively for us. Uh, okay, the, that is a very, very interesting geometric object. It, it plays an important role uh, in uh, geometric and lens uh, correspondence. Uh, and uh, let's, let us proceed. Uh, there is uh, a uh, determinant line, line bundle on this uh, affine Uh And uh, yeah, in general, uh, as uh, my example here illustrates, the fiber of um, over uh, the point with M distinct coordinates uh, of this AK, where M, where, where M distinct numbers appears, is uh, the direct product of M affine Grassmannians. And uh, if we restrict the determinant line bundle to the fiber of this point, we get what we will get is uh, the just exterior power of the determinant line bundles on each of these copy of affine Grassmannian. Okay, um, now let us talk about um, the Schubert cells in this balance on Ringfield situation. Uh, let us, uh, in this case, the uh, Schubert cells are parameterized by the K tuples of uh, dominant co weights. And let us pick such uh, uh, Duple of coweights and consider a section of this uh, map from balance on Greenfield Grossmanian to the configuration space of points, AK. 
uh, let us first define the value of this section on a point with the uh, pairwise distinct coordinates. It's going to be just uh, the points inside the, each of these affine Grossmannian corresponding to uh, the co weights, uh, uh, yeah, defined by this uh, lambda one, lambda k. Okay, uh, and what, hap <coughs> what happens if we uh, glue some of the coordinates is that the corresponding co weights just sum up and uh, the, the uh, first the two affine Grossmannians um, becomes a single affine Grossmannian as I illustrated. And uh, these co weights just sum add, add up to each other. And uh, what we get as uh, a value of our section at a point where uh, there are I1 uh, coordinates equal to C1 and so on, I M uh, coordinates equal to C M is uh, this point where the corresponding co weights also uh, sum up and uh, this point is lying in the nth power of the affine Grossmannian. So uh, now we can define uh, the Schubert cell in this situation. Uh, it also has uh, this structure map to uh, the configuration space, to the affine space, to obtain just by composition, right? Because this uh, Schubert cell lies in the affine Grossmannian, which is mapped to AK. So we have this map, which we will denote by pi, sorry, pi uh, uh, underlined lambda check. And the fiber at uh, point C, a point C with M distinct coordinate is just G, the G of OR orbits inside each of these M uh, affine Grossmannians. So uh, that is how it is defined. And as an abstract uh, scheme, it is isomorphic to the uh, product of uh, uh, Schubert cells corresponding to these co weights, which are defined here. Let me again give an example uh, of k equals two and uh, pair of co weights lambda one check, lambda two check. Then uh, we have this uh, Schubert cell defined by these two co -weights. It is mapped to A2. And what is uh, the fiber at a point with the uh, pairwise, with the distinct coordinates is just the product of the Schubert cells in usual affine Grossmannian. And what is the fiber at a point with equal coordinates? It is uh, the unique, the, 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 the single, single uh, uh, Schubert cell corresponding to the sum of these uh, two dominant co weights. Okay. Uh, that is uh, Schubert cells. Uh, these are Schubert cells in the balanced genital case. And uh, the natural question again that can be asked is uh, what is uh, the space of sections of this uh, balanced on Greenfield of the, of the power of the determinant line bundle on the Schubert varieties in this balanced on Greenfield case? And the answer is given by the theorem that I want to tell you. 
uh, and uh, it is given in terms of uh, certain uh, G of T modules, which are called global DM Azure modules. So uh, I have explained what the left part of this theorem means. Uh, so now let me explain what the right part means. That will be purely algebraic part. Okay. Uh, so we need to define uh, what is a global DM Azure module. And uh, let, let us first define uh, the globalization of a single DM Azure module. So we pick uh, just uh, some affine DM Azure module. We define its globalization just as, uh, just to define it, we just tender it with uh, the polynomial ring uh, in one variable. So uh, we need to, def to define the G of T action on this module. Uh, this the measure module is G of T module. We tender it by C of T. And the action is defined by just uh, some kind of uh, Newton binomial rule. Uh, here to act by X uh, T to the power of M, we uh, sum up the action of X to uh, x t to the power of g, and here we multiply by m minus g. So that's some natural way of uh, g, g of t to act on this space. And now uh, to define uh, the global DM Azure module uh, corresponding to uh, not a single co-weight by, but uh, a k tuple of uh, co-weights. Uh, we need to do uh, the following thing. We uh, take these uh, globalized uh, DM Azure modules corresponding to the co weights lambda one check and so on to lambda k check, take their tensor product. Uh, each of these uh, modules is a cyclic G of T module. Uh, since th this uh, module was cyclic uh, by definition, and uh, actually, this globalization uh, remains. It, one can show that th this module is still cyclic. And we take uh, a product of these uh, cyclic vectors inside this tensor product and generate the G of T module from this module. So it's a cyclic module generated inside uh, Tensor product of these globalized DM Azure modules. Uh, maybe it, this definition seems uh, to be uh, unreasonable, but in fact it isn't. And um, let me just uh, say uh, some uh, few words about motivation. Uh, if uh, if one studies the representation theory of this. Uh, current algebra G of T. Uh, the main uh, modules that are studied uh, there are local and global uh, while modules. And uh, Fourier and Littleman showed that local while module in simple laced case is isomorphic to uh, the level one affine DM Azure modules. And uh, these modules are uh, like uh, the, the DM Azure counterpart of global while modules. Uh, the, like uh, the exact uh, statement is that for fundamental lambdas, uh, uh, in simply last case, uh, this global DM Azure module of level one is nothing else but global wild modules. Um, so that is a very uh, interesting higher level generalization of global wild modules. But uh, we do not we do not uh, talk today about while modules saw so that was just uh, the motivation, purely algebraic motivation for these um, global DM Azure modules. But uh, let us proceed to um, uh, our next stop, and uh, that is uh, highest weight algebras. Uh, namely, uh, it turns out that the global DM Azure module admits uh, an action of H of T uh, 
Uh, of course, H of T, li uh, H is a Cartan subalgebra, the Lie algebra of the maximal torus. Uh, so uh, H of T, of course, lies inside G of T. So it acts on uh, the global Demazur module just uh, by definition. But in fact, it admits another action of this algebra commuting with uh, the standard action of G of T. Uh, to define this new action on uh, the cyclic vector, our, our Demazur modules is cyclic by definition. To define this H of T action on the cyclic vector, we just define it in a trivial way. This action co coincides with uh, the, the natural G of T action. And uh, for, for any other vector in uh, the global Demazur modules, it can be represented uh, as U of V lambda, where U is some element of the universe enveloping of G of T. Uh, so to define the action of this H T to the power of M on this uh, vector, we define it to like to, to be, to, to, to commute, to, for, for these two action to commute. Uh, uh, just we, we, we first apply H, Oops, sorry, there should be M here. Uh, H, T, M to V lambda and then U. Of course, uh, it is not clear why uh, this is well defined. It needs to be checked. But uh, it is true that uh, the global Demazur module admits not only this G of T action, but uh, another commuting action of this H of T. Okay. Uh, and uh, what we can do is we can uh, just take quotient of this universal enveloping of H of T by the annihilator of this cyclic vector uh, to make the action exact or uh, ju just uh, take this quotient, then this algebra will be finitely generated as it can be showed. And in fact, as a vector space, it will just coincide with the highest weight uh, space of the global Demazur modules. That is why it's called the highest weight algebra. And uh, that is easy to see just uh, because if you pick the cyclic vector of uh, Demazur modules, then all, uh, uh, all the vectors of the same weight are generated from it by applying H of T. And uh, so if, if we take the annihilator of this vector, we get the highest weight space. And by definition, this module was defined as a submodule of tensor product of these globalized affine Demazur modules, whose highest weight space is just a polynomial ring. So, uh, it can be viewed as uh, the ring of functions on uh, the configuration space, uh, going back to valence and Greenfield context. So our highest weight uh, algebra lives inside this polynomial algebra. And uh, that allows us to state uh, the theorem. Again, note that uh, as we uh, explained above uh, the uh, Bellinson Greenfield Schubert variety uh, can be mapped to the configuration space, affine space, affine k dimensional space. So the space of sections which we are interested in is a module over the polynomial ring. Uh, we can dualize it with respect to this uh, action polynomial, of polynomial algebra. And then uh, the sections would be nothing else but the global Demazur module corresponding to this uh, K tuple of dominant co weights of level L tensored over this highest weight algebra uh, on the uh, polynomial ring on uh, the space of functions on uh, the configuration space. And uh, that is uh, our uh, the, the theorem that I wanted to tell you. And uh, thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Ilya, for this very nice lecture. So I think we have time to take maybe one or two questions. See one question offer, so you can ask your question. Ah, okay, just the, the last statement you had, uh, uh, maybe you can bring again the last theorem that you have stated. So uh, it is, you take the CAK dual modules. Now I'm asking just what are the finiteness properties which are known here? So usually if you have uh, something which is not finite type and you take the dual, it is kind of pathological unless you take some dual in a restricted sense. So here oh. is it, is it a finite type of a CAK or you take a dual in some, in some good sense? Yes, it is a, of finite type. Or for example, as I illustrated here, for well, case k equals two, uh, the the fibers uh, at uh, the points of uh, uh, over this a two are just uh, Schubert cells in the fingers many and either a Schubert uh, cell or a, a product of two Schubert cells, and uh, Schubert uh, Schubert cells in a fingers many are finite dimensional, uh, so. Uh, they are exactly. okay. Beautiful orbits. So uh, in Berenson Greenfield uh, again, uh, this uh, it, the Berenson Greenfield Grassmannian is stratified by these uh, Berenson Greenfield Schubert varieties, which are uh, of finite type. Or they are of finite type over A two. So yeah, uh, there is just a fin finitely generated module over. So can you bring again the statement? Okay, so so this H zero, ah, so uh, first of all, so this uh, Grassmannian A K okay. lambda roof. So first of all, when you take it in a relative situation, again you get something proper over A K. Uh, yes, take, yes. Yes. Okay, so it has an algebraic structure, and uh, when you take the H zero as a module, is it? Uh, uh, what kind of module is it? Is it also free or not necessarily? It is free. It is free. Yes, the uh, balance on Greenfield Grassmannian is uh, in flat, and uh, this uh, polynomial, uh, this uh, uh, Schubert uh, balance on Greenfield Schubert varieties are uh, flat over the affine space. So and the H zero is also, uh, and also. Free. The, yeah, the module free. over polynomials is just a free module. Yeah, okay. So now in the classical case, as far as I remember, there is also a cohomological part of the statement that's saying that the higher cohomology is trivial in the yes. classical yes. setting. And this is also uh, useful when you have a situation in a family, if you have the, you know the higher cohomology vanish, you can deduce freeness. So here in the, the in the setups that you discuss in your talk, do, do we also know that the higher cohomology is zero? Yes, yes, thank you for this question. The higher cohomology uh, is zero. That's, uh, that is correct. Thank you. So I think, uh, yeah. So I see just a very uh, quick question. Please uh, go ahead, Hua, but very quickly. Hello, hello. Uh, I have a question about the definition of the uh, Benison Dreamville Shoe variety. Uh, it looks like you define the session uh, fiber-wise. It's not defined globally. Uh, how do you know this definition is well-defined? It is a truly session. Yeah, I cheated uh, a bit. Uh, of course, uh, one need to check uh, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff here, but uh, th that is just something I am not going to right now. But uh, you're right that uh, that needs to, to be checked.